Hello friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Orcs Workshop and we have yet another little project. This is a Billy Grammer guitar. I think this may only be the second Grammer guitar I've ever worked on in the 30 years, but uh, it's kind of uh, neat. The uh, issue is just uh, kind of like one of those common issues, the bridge is pulled up and maybe you can see it there in the video, it's pulled up pretty good. It appears to have bolts in it here, although I haven't looked inside yet because of those uh, dots. They usually put bolts through wherever those dots are. So we'll check that out. Um, this one is signed by Billy Grammer, as you can see there. And uh, so I guess he probably won't want me to uh, polish the top and buff the top out. <laughs> just a joke, just kidding. Um, I'll probably do a little light fret job on this also and uh, set it up to play. So that's going to be the extent of it. Um, I just noticed though that the uh, pick guard is loose on the corner here. So we might be able to do something with that too. So that's about all I see on it right at the moment. If I see anything else I'll let you know. Well I thought I'd just show you what I had to do. Here's the screw and the nut. If you look at this little toy crescent wrench it's basically I think a novelty but I use it in the shop all the time because you can't you never know what size the nut is inside there and you can adjust this thing and it it works and that's how it came out of there right there I didn't have any, even taken it to the nut out of the wrench yet and uh, it was a really long screw so the nut was way up on there and I had to unscrew it a long time what I had to do was I actually had to uh, take a Dremel tool and just destroy the pearl that was in there just get rid of it I tried to pry the pearl out I heated it up first and tried to see if it would get loose and that pearl was at least an eighth inch thick I've never seen any dots that thick before ever so it wouldn't have come out of there no matter how much prying plus all you do when you try prying it is you mess up your wood and everything and you chip the pearl so it's like impossible to get it out of there so I just took a Dremel tool and just just routed it out uh, we're in my safety gear of course because that stuff's poisonous and uh, anyway I got that all routed out so I could see the screw then I took a little tiny tiny chisel this little chisel and I went in there and cleaned all the glue around the screw head and out of the screw slot and especially around the screw because that glue there's so much glue in there that that screw you would never be able to turn that screw then I ground a real new square end on that little screwdriver to get the uh, you know make sure the edges are real sharp uh, that they grab the screw head really good that's always very important if you've got a screw that's going to slip on you or one that's in really tight re-grind your head of your screwdriver to get it really sharp on the edges and flat and that's what I did and so I was able to break both screws loose and I've already got this one out I've got to take this one out now I mean it does spin and I can't hold the nut by hand it's 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 too tight for that I, I've tried uh, there's no way I'm going to hold it by hand, so I'll have to get lucky again and get this little wrench on there if I can get it on there. I made myself a custom heat shield that would fit right around this bridge good, and I can leave the aluminum on here and heat that bridge up good and hot without heating everything else. We'll bring you back when we get the bridge off. Well, I didn't have my camera on for all my little explanation I just made. I made a 32 year observation and that is that I've been doing this for over 32 years and I can honestly say I've had just as many come in that need bridge replacements with these extra bolt holes through the top as I have without. In fact, I would say the odds are that most of the bridge replacements have had bolts going through the top. So my 32 year observation is that bolts don't help. They don't help at all. And in fact, I think they create more problems than they fix. For instance, a lot of times those bolts are the last things that are holding and then they pull up right where the bolts are and they crack the top right there where the bolts go. Or they make real big humps right where the bolts are. So on this guitar, I am not putting the bolts back in it. The second thing I did with the camera off and I'm not going to do this again, but I'll show you what I did. 
was I precisely located this where it needs to be with the bridge pins. I put the pins in and got this exactly where it's supposed to be. Then I very, very, very carefully with a brand new, very fine point exacto knife, went around and cut that fine, fine line right around the bridge, all the way around. And I just cut through the finish, not into the wood, just cut the finish. And now I'm going to remove every bit of finishing glue within that scribed line. And the reason I do that is because that little bit of finish around that, like in other words, they took this down to bare wood, but they left about a sixteenth of an inch of finish around on the inside. And therefore, this thing is actually sitting on finish. It leaves an airspace between this wood and this top. And uh, anytime you have more glue space, you know, airspace for the glue, that's not a good thing. You want, you want these pieces to be touching. The glue, when you have a nice, I'm exaggerating, but when you have an open glue joint like this, glue doesn't work very well that way. You close that joint and put glue in there and it works really well. So that's one of the reasons I'm doing it. The other reason is when you have that finish around the outside edge, that's the first thing that comes loose um, on, the, on the glue joint because it, the glue doesn't stick to that finish very good, so it starts to lift, and that creates that lifting problem. So anyway, bottom line is I've, I'm going to get rid of all the glue and the old junk and finish and stuff inside of that very fine scribed line. Put this back on there, and it should be fine. I thought I'd show you a little bit about how I scrape this clean. I've got these safety glasses that are magnified and they really do work well. They're great glasses. You can get them off, the, off of eBay somewhere, I believe is where I got them. And uh, then I take this little tiny chisel and I sharpen it as razor sharp as I can get it. And uh, I literally get down at a very close range here and I use both hands that I scrape to my, into my finger so that I don't get off and accidentally get on top of the finish. And I really get all that glue off. This little tiny scraper works better than anything larger because it puts a lot of pressure in a very small space. And you can, once you get used to using it, you can go very quick with it. already gone around the perimeter and gotten rid of all the finish right to my little tiny scribed line. So now I'm just getting rid of all the old glue and stuff that's stuck to the surface. I want to get back to bare wood. I believe that'll work. And if you've done it very carefully, you can't see a line around there. It's absolutely looks just like it came out of the factory. You can't tell any difference, but yet you've got a better glue surface. As we've seen before on some of my videos, I don't take any chances when it comes to gluing these things up. I don't assume glue is going to squeeze everywhere. I put glue on every single glued surface. I take a brush and I work it in. I make sure and I make sure like where those little flaps have pulled up under on the top here where it's split a little bit. I've got glue up underneath there. I get glue everywhere. You only get one chance at this and you do it right. And now I'll put these outside bridge pins in to help locate it, just like I did when I... And if you get those in there good and locate it, that'll really help you locate it really well. And now we'll just glue her up. I thought I'd show you that I've got the bridge glued back on the grammar guitar. I've replaced the dots. I still have to do a little tiny bit of black fill around the dots yet to make that go away where it's where they were popped out of there. And uh, then I, you know, I said that the pick guard was loose. Well, it was looser than I thought. As I started moving it around, it just basically popped off. And uh, so I'll scrape all. I've already scraped all the glue off the back of the pick guard. Now I'll scrape all the glue off the top of the guitar here, and I'll order a new adhesive. Uh, you can 
buy this peel off adhesive that would cover this whole area and we'll stick it back on there. I've taken the pick guard off this uh, Billy Grammer guitar and uh, I've already cleaned all the back of this and now I'm in the process of just scraping this old resin glue, if you will, off of the back of it. Um, there is no easy way to do that. It just takes time. So I'm in the process of now scraping all the resin glue out of the uh, pick guard area and it's stuck on top of the finish. There's no easy way to do this so what I do is just put on the old close-up glasses, take my rounded blade X-Acto knife that's very sharp and I just lightly scratch over the top to, to get rid of the, the glue. I mean there's tons of glue there. Now you could probably use some kind of a solvent, but uh, you know, you're taking a big chance that you're going to mess up the finish somewhere on the guitar, so it really is just about the best way to do it is just to scrape it off of here. And actually it comes off pretty clean. Um, if you're careful, you don't even really scratch the finish underneath here very much. It's uh, not that it would matter anyway, because the pick guard's going to cover it, but uh, but you'd be surprised, it comes off pretty clean. It's just a lot of scraping. Thought I'd give you an update on this uh, Grammar guitar. I uh, got her all put back together. This is one of the few instruments that I've kept for more than a week. Um, I actually kept this one about a month, or a little bit more maybe even than a month, and that was because the uh, glue, or the uh, stick on, the double stick tape, whatever you want to call it, was back ordered that I needed for this and so uh, anyway I just waited till that came in and the customer was in no hurry this guitar more or less sets around but he just wanted it put back together good so basically we removed the bridge and put the bridge back on we removed the pick guard put it back on we leveled all the frets and leveled the fretboard in between the frets um, there was a couple of high uh, pearl pieces and I leveled them down to e level with the uh, ebony and uh, oiled it up. Uh, the fingerboard had dr had dry cracked through here and so I oiled it up real good and uh, hopefully that'll keep that from getting any worse. I did kind of lightly buff the back and the uh, sides. I didn't do anything to the top just simply because he has this uh, autograph from Billy Grammer and I didn't think he'd want to do that. Here's the peg head just to give you an idea what it looks like. But anyway, it turned out real nice. I'm not really a guitar player by any stretch. I'm barely a mandolin player. But uh, so uh, this is at least what it sounds like. You can hear it. And a nice clear tone. And I want to say thank you very much for subscribing to my channel. And uh, I appreciate all the new subscribers that we've recently picked up. Uh, Randy Schartiger uh, has a channel and uh, mentioned uh, my work on his channel and I really appreciate Randy doing that. He, uh, that's a great thing that we should all support one another in this uh, business. Um, you know, there's all kinds of room for all kinds of people to be uh, making these videos and doing this thing and there, we don't need to be jealous of one another and uh, we need to be helping each other and promoting each other. So if you haven't checked out Randy Schartiger's channel, be sure to do that. He's a nice fella and does a good job on a lot of different things. You can see that he's multi-talented as soon as you click on his channel. Thank you for watching. Uh, tell your friends about the channel and uh, hope to see you down the road. Thank you.